Right, so unless you've been living under a little brick, you would know that it's, uh, National Hill Climb Championships is this weekend, or this coming weekend, on Sunday. It's up Hato. I was very excited to do this, unfortunately I crashed, but I did do a hill climb this uh, this Sunday, it was, um, and I've got a vlog coming, it's class. Um, <laughs> it's not ready, but anyway, this is the climb, uh, Hato. Uh, you'll see Feathery's got the KOM, and then got Laverick and some other, all, all good names. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to this later. So, the main purpose of the video is to establish who is going to be favourite. So, we'll start, you know, one of the first climbs where a lot of people turned up, and this is the Rigos. Um, so, you can see Ed Laverick did 370 watts or something. Uh, no, sorry, 410 watts for the 11 minutes 30, which is um, very, very good numbers, obviously. Uh, Andrew Feather did 10.39. Um, this wasn't necessarily indicative of um, exactly the best, best things to see, but you can see here we had Richard Gilder came first with 11.15, then Laverick. Um, 11.20, then Feather 11.29, so you can sort of see the numbers that they were pushing. Um, he did, uh, I believe when we look at this segment in, um, all together, you'll be able to see that uh, Richard Gilder did about, you know, pretty similar what's 400-ish, but obviously I think weighs a little bit more. Laverick did 410, which is like, you know, around 6.87 watts per kilo, I believe. Always people like to get their weights under wraps, so he says 6.9 here, but I think he's probably a little less. Um, than what his weight is on Strava is, I think his weight is on Strava, I should say he's 60, I think he said he's 57, 59, but only he knows. Um, we're then, so that was the first real climb where a lot of hitters turned up, Rigos, and it was one old Richard Gelder, he won that, fair enough. Um, obviously, Andrew Feathers won a lot of climbs, um, he won up uh, Great Dunfell as well, but I, I'm, you know, that was quite early on, so I want to go more closer. So the next really big one where most people turned up was uh, the Tumble. Um, so last year, Ed Labrick won it by like literally like a second off Dan Evans, and you can see it's ridiculous. They beat the Tour of Britain, Caro and Peloton, sorry, up there. Um, and you'll see again, that's, you know, seven watts per kilo, more or less, um, from Labrick, and the same with Dan Evans, which is just quite frankly ridiculous for 11 minutes 30. Um, so you can sort of see the numbers that we're dealing with are incredibly high, um, and that you have to be, have to have mega, mega power. No one rode up tumble today, but that is soft. Um, but anyway, this is this year. So you can see we had Andrew Feather, Ed Laverick, both 11.49. Then you had Dan Evans, I think he was only 10 seconds back. Gildare again. Um, Archie Goss, good ride from him as well. Same with this, I don't know who he is. And Cameron Biddle is another lad who's been doing very well. Um, got top 20 in Tor Mendips, I believe. So he's looking pretty sort of strong in the ramp, uh, in prams and stuff. And Phil Stoneleg is another lad. He, he should smash out the Yvettes. I'd also say Max Stedman is someone else to look out for, but his numbers, I haven't really, he hasn't do too, done too many hill climbs, so it's not, uh, you can't tell too much from him. Uh, but anyway, so you can sort of see all the numbers here. So um, we'll, we'll go back to the climb here. So he said he was 10 seconds to find for Hator. Um, he's on his Instagram, I've been seeing 64 kilos, um, which is about 6.7 watts per kilo, um, which is, yes, you know, that's roughly what I expected from him. And then if we see Andrew Feather won that, um, they all ride Cannondale, or not, they don't all ride, um, Laverick rides, a, what is this, Tifosi, and then everyone else, the top lads, tend to ride Cannondale's single ring, I'm not sure if everyone's going single ring for the main thing, I've heard some people say it's double ring climb, because it's pretty fast, um, but again, you know, this climb, Feather 1, wind conditions, very wind variable, that's why I didn't get the KOM, um, but you know, 430 watts, again, you would have seen on bike radar, he weighs about 63 kilos, so again, if we look at we, look, we can look at the power numbers here, and again, you'll see there, you know, close to 7 watts per kilo, 6.9 watts per kilo um, for 12 minutes. So, you know, again, very, very solid. So based on the tumble, you again say, you know, these two are really, really close, Ed Laverick and Andrew Feather. Dan Evans a little bit off, but he might be there. There may be some other people, like, I haven't, like, I don't know all the hill climbers up north. I haven't really seen, like, that many that are really, like, obviously Adam Camway's going to be strong and a couple other lads, but there's no one who's, like, I'm really aware of who's going to do Unreal up there, but... Like, if there is, just like comment below and I'll, I'll sort them out. But obviously, I'm, most of the races I'm looking at, the people I follow tend to be more from the south. Um, but anyway, so this weekend we had two hill climbs, um, which, you know, they didn't do the same ones, unfortunately. I'm not, Dan Evans, I, I didn't really see where he went this weekend, but he went somewhere. I believe we might have a weekend off. But anyway, this is this is the uh, Andrew Feather. They're similar to climbs, Burrington and uh, Team Tour. They're both pretty local to Bristol, so local to me. Uh, I did do Barrington, and I got a class time. Uh, so anyway, I did 500 watts for 5 minutes 10, which is obviously quite frankly off the chart. Um, there's no segment for the whole way. I don't know why. Please, someone just create one. Uh, 
but luckily we, we're on the computer so we can look at it and again you'll see 7.9 watts per kilo for five minutes which if you look at the watts per kilo chart is, is off the chart it's it's next level stuff like it really is the uk hill climb season if you want to be winning national championships you have to be like you know enough power not necessarily race tactics itself but to be in the world tour for sure for sure like i mean no one is doing 7.9 watts per kilo like as in if you're doing 7.9 watts per kilo and can ride, ride race a bike and get good results you'll be in the world tour no no worries like a good climber as well in the world tour not just you know a pack or whatever like probably up there like that is very very impressive um and you might look at the average speed and the gradient and be like that's not too impressive but as you can see there's huge ramps it's really ramping climb i haven't actually ridden this climb i think i might ridden it but i've never raced it um apparently it's quite a savage one um anyway they have the next day barrington hill climb um this was on the sunday uh, andrew feather didn't decide to race i guess he's you know he does have a child these days so he can't just spend a weekend racing i've done this climb like thousands of times well, not thousands but like at least 50 60 times um and it's a really really nice climb six percent one downhill part so around here where you get a bit of speed up but all big ring i uh, know anyway, 440 watts for rigid good it says he's 65 kilos i think he's a little less based on his previous watts per kilo when he won or his power is not really consistent you never know um but you can see you know he's he's up there again um got the KOM for the first part i'd say you know 450 watts he beat cam biddle from last year he beat andrew feather um ed laverick's power didn't record from this um i wonder who that little lad is um but anyway yeah, yeah you can see so like he's oh um, i guess he hadn't pretty ridden the climb you can see the last 430 watts people tend to block there but one person who didn't block there was ed laverick who won it got the course record by 11 seconds which was set by Tave, tj van pettenjo i don't know how to pronounce his name like a fair while ago like pretty long ago um and he did like 390 and weighed 60 kilos or 400 so and this day wasn't fast that's what i mean like if this was a fast day like i know people who did similar numbers to last year maybe were 10 15 seconds slower so laverick could have absolutely smashed the time set by pettinger and you should know where that reference is from from danny art himself but yeah this is the climb you can see 430 watts again you, you know if he's weighing 57 kilos on his training beats he said 7.3 watts per kilo potentially it's high i don't know he didn't on his little vlog i just watched he didn't put his weight on which is a bit annoying but maybe he doesn't want to show him how heavy he is but i mean you know he's on good form um i saw i was watching the cowbell corner which is just like this little corner here pretty good crowds on it on the climb and like he was flying past like 40k an hour past there like properly going properly going for it uh so again we'll go on the watts per kilo chart and you'll be able to see the sort of numbers again so it's not the exact same climb but he's getting 7.2 7.3 in my opinion, you know, if you compare straight away Team Tour and Laverick, Barrington, you'd say that Feather would be a favourite. You know, 7.9 watts per kilo for five minutes. Add another minute and a half, he's still going to be doing 7.6. Uh, but I would say this is that Andrew Feather won the National Hill Climb Championships last year in two minutes. Ed Laverick wouldn't do that. Like, don't want to be disrespectful, but he's not going to win a climb on two minutes. But Andrew Feather is because Andrew Feather can, he seems to be one of these guys who's really good on the two minutes and the 12 minutes. But then on the longer climbs, they're a lot closer, a lot, lot closer. Like I think, obviously, Laverick wouldn't be like 12 seconds off this, but he, you know, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't. I don't doubt he would have won it just looking at the watts per kilo purely. Um, so I think you know, it's it's hard to tell exactly from this. Again, Richard Gilday, you don't know, you don't know, like you know, did he train through this week? I can't see all his numbers, or did he really taper? I mean, I know for a hill climb, if if you do a two day taper, so you've like a really easy day on the two days before, day before two openers. That can be really different to, compared to training hard on, let's say, the Thursday rest day slash openers on the Friday and then Saturday race. Like, especially mentally, because hill climbs are so much mental, that really can make quite a big difference. So it's again, it's hard to read a lot into it, but I would say the best way to read into it would be on this climb here, the tumble. And I think these two are going to be close. In my opinion, I think Andrew Feather might have it uh, because I think if we look on this last climb, he did manage to beat by three seconds obviously this is ed labrick last year you know he, had, he crashed etc etc didn't have the perfect season this year you, you'd say he would have a perfect season where the top brain he's obviously got a lot of form from that and he's been looking pretty strong he's pretty motivated he's got a lighter bike as well from last year i, I, I recall um but i think last year wasn't too happy about his, his bike etc so this year he's definitely got a lot of bike proper hill climb spec that makes a difference i mean andrew feather's bike will weigh five kilos if you're on a seven kilo bike i mean that that is significant um, people can say, you know, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's just the rider. But it's like, no, for sure, hill climbs is like 99% the rider, or 95%, but 5% for sure is is definitely the bike. Um, but yeah, here it is. This is the climb we're going to see. 
who's going to win the men's. I think Andrew Feather, the women's, um, I don't know, to be honest, would be the simple answer. I just, I, I think if Jocelyn Loudon's doing it, she might win it. She won two years ago, six watts per kilo for five minutes, I think it was. She's a favourite. Apart from that, I, I don't know. I, I, I find it, like, it's hard to really predict. The only reason I know so much about the men's, like, is just because, obviously, I've raced against these people, but also just because, like, there tends to be people who dominate more, and you can really see the different specialities. So you know, like, oh, he's, a, like, Adam Kenway, three-minute man. Then you've got, like, Feather, you can say long climb, but he's also maybe a two-minute climb man as well. Like, so you sort of know, well, I feel like women's is a bit more unpredictable. You don't know who's going to have it on, a, on any given day. But yeah, so in order to win it, you're going to have to do about 6.7 6 to 7 watts per kilo, maybe a bit more than that to win it. Something absurd. This is just in training. Um, Andrew Feather did. He went out on a Wednesday and uh, just banged it out. Um, obviously, Ad Labrador was in a hill climb. And again, you know, he, he said that was about 7 watts per kilo, more or less, for him. Um, 6.8, 7 watts per kilo, something around that, um, which is absolutely off the chart. I think he's going to have a good chance. He's... My friend knows him, he's like 52 kilo lad, races for Zappi, he's done like, you know, 5 watts per kilo normalised for like 5 hours or something, so he's a strong lad. Nankra as well, he was at, um, he was at Burrington yesterday, uh, and he got a decent time as well, so, you know, he could definitely be up there as well. He won Bucks last year with a, a, a crazy good time. And then you have Richard Gilday again, Archie Cross, maybe I make, could cop a top 10, top 20, you don't know who's going to turn up. Cam Biddle as well, um, that was, I believe, in the, hey, no, there was in like the, two days there's a two-day stage race up there i can't remember exactly what it's called but that, that was the race that they were in so you'll see beer blockies there as well I'm a big lad but obviously ridiculous numbers so i mean to be fair i say that he does the same numbers as andrew feather and andrew feather probably weighs like 15 kilos less um but yeah so andrew feather is my favorite for the national championships this year um who do you think is going to win i think it's going to be close between the Laverick and feather i really don't think there's much between them at all could literally just be like they have winning the hill there, you know, who's who's ridden it before, who's ridden it the most. Obviously, I think Adler Labrick's done a hill climb this year, did a hill climb last year as well on it. So, potentially knows it better. Andrew Feather's done it in training. Andrew Feather's more local. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's um, it's a hard one. It's a really hard one to call. Uh, I don't know who's, you know, no one knows who's going to do it on the day. It could be someone unexpected. It could be Max Stedman. It could, there's a lot of people saying it could be Roman, it could be TT, it could be hill climb specialist. But I think... In reality, if you look at the numbers, it's going to be between them two. Obviously, Dan Evans as well. No one knows. 10 seconds. Can you find it? Um, so, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm excited to see what the results are. Shame I can't be racing it, but alas, the old man crashes by it, so it is what it is. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video. If you've got any more thoughts about National Hill Grand Champs, or you've got me any more people that I've, for some reason, decided they're not going to win, and they definitely are, then please let me know because I will look into their numbers, look into what their thoughts are races they have been doing if they've been doing hill climbs or not and uh see how they're gonna do so anyway, cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this video and i'll see you in the next one